Yeah, so uh, as this is example two, I'm going to go through it um, quicker than I did example one. And so if it feels too quick, then watch example one. But um, example zero is even more important than example one. So I encourage you to watch example zero um, more than any other example. Uh, it will add a lot to your understanding. Now, um, in examples one and zero, I um, provided the full formal definition of a limit using delta and epsilon, but here I've extracted the most important parts. Um, well, not the most important parts, period, but the most important part for writing um, delta epsilon proofs, limit proofs. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is prove this statement true using a delta epsilon limit argument uh, where you know the crux of the argument lies here, uh, which is um, saying that whenever absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, it immediately follows that absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Okay, so if we adopt this uh, statement followed by this statement to our particular situation, um, then it will give us the start to our proof, and that it go as follows which is that we'd write that absolute value of x minus one uh, being less than delta, and by the way, I choose a to be one in most of my examples simply because one is easy to evaluate, but no other reason. It, you'd still follow these same steps if you were doing um, x going to two or three. Obviously, if this is not one, then this won't remain negative six, but you get it. Okay, cool. So uh, we have absolute value of x minus one is less than delta, and we needed to imply that absolute value of f of x, which is 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 minus l, so minus a negative 6, be less than epsilon. This is what we need. Yeah? Uh, okay, cool. And, of course, we're going to start here and then create a relationship between delta and epsilon. That's simple. So next, um, uh, we're going to write that this and this is how we always create that relationship between delta and epsilon, which is by manipulating this guy. Um, and so next we're gonna write that this is the same thing as the following, because it is, which is uh, absolute value of two x squared minus five x plus three um, is less than um, epsilon. And then in our next step, we're gonna factor this guy. And when we factor him, we're gonna get um, two x uh, minus three times um, x minus one is uh, less than epsilon. Now, um, I'm going to write that this implies, <clears throat> this very last thing we wrote, implies that um, absolute value of x minus one uh, times um, absolute value of two x minus three is less than epsilon. And all I have done here to go from this step to this step is use the commutative property of multiplication and also the fact that the absolute value of a times b is equal to the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. Yeah, okay, cool. And then from here, we're gonna say that we have absolute value of x minus one is less than epsilon divided by absolute value of two x minus three, yeah? Cool. All right. Um, it's now very tempting looking at this and this to claim that delta is epsilon divided by absolute value of 2x minus 3. What we don't like there is that's not, too, that's not a very simple relationship between delta and epsilon. And moreover, it's a relationship that involves x. We want a relationship that involves only epsilon and uh, numbers and delta. Yeah. So we want to say delta equals epsilon times something. Um, of course, times something could look like dividing it by something, right? Uh, if that something is a fraction. Okay, cool. Um, um, all right. Um, anyway, anyway, you get that. I didn't even need to explain that. But um, now what we have left to do is manipulate this and get it to purely numbers and epsilon. To do that, we must make an assumption, and that's setting um, delta equal to some value. And for convenience, let's set it equal to 1. This assumption makes sense because if somehow delta equaling 1 is uh, small enough for your epsilon requirement, great. If not, then we're going to find another value of delta, which will definitely be good enough for your epsilon requirements. Yeah? Okay, cool. All right. Um, so, so with this assumption that delta um, is equal to 1, we can come back here and see this as saying absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 1 because we claim that delta is 1. We assume that delta is 1. 
But this then in turn means that negative 1 is less than um, x minus 1 is less than 1, which in turn means that 0 is less than x is less than 2. But for x's that look like this, we must have that absolute value of 2x minus 3 uh, be uh, the f abiding by the following, which is that it must be less than what is its biggest value. We get it when we plug in 0, right? Which is 3. And then the smallest value we get by plugging in the other endpoint, which is 2. And so when we plug in 2 in here, we get uh, 4 minus 3, which is 1. So uh, whenever this is true, meaning when this is true, and this is true for if we choose delta to be 1 as an assumption, right? So whenever this is true, this is true, which in turn means that this is true, uh, which in turn means that this is true about absolute value of um, 2x minus 3. So then it means that um, we can come back here and uh, rewrite the following to read, um, to read as I'm about to write. Absolute value of x minus 1 is less than epsilon divided by uh, 3. Because if this is true, then surely this is true since absolute value of 2x minus 3 is less than 3. Yeah? Okay, cool. So take a minute to think about why that has to be true if it hasn't um, clicked or if you don't get it. But yeah, um, and now we're done because we're going to say um, choose delta uh, to be um, choose delta to be the minimum. And I forgot to do this part. I just said choose delta to be epsilon over whatever it was in example one. I didn't um, do this part, which is very important. So choose because then it makes our assumption true and our sub subsequent conclusion true as well. Um, so choose delta to equal the minimum of 1 and um, epsilon over 3, and we're good because, well, like I said, if 1 is good enough, then great. If choosing delta equals 1 is good enough. If not, then choosing delta to be epsilon over 3 will for sure be good enough. Yeah? Okay, cool. Uh, and I'm uh, gonna now do a check that we've picked the right um, we've picked the right um, delta. Um, so so um, and by the way, again, uh, that assumption the delta equaling um, that assumption the delta equaling um, one makes sense because remember you can pick epsilon to be very small. So um, I need. Oh, so I need, I cut that off. Um, so epsilon needs to be very small. So if one doesn't satisfy, then the other value uh, will ensure that um, you've picked, you know, something as small as required as I'm about to show. Um, which is, you know, for, um, if one is uh, small enough, great. If not, epsilon over three will be um, good enough because um, you will have, and this is checking that we've picked um, the right epsilon. You'll have, um, you'll have uh, that absolute value of x minus one being less than delta. We need that to imply, um, and I'll write what we needed to imply, which is f of x minus l. Right? We needed to imply the two x squared minus five x minus three minus a negative six um, be less than. Uh, epsilon. So we need this to imply this. I intentionally wrote the end here in red, as you'll see, because now we have to check. We need to follow a series of steps that lead us to this. Well, to start, we could write that saying this is the same as saying absolute value of x minus 1 is less than epsilon over 3, because delta is epsilon over 3 if it's not 1, right? Okay, cool. Then um, we say uh, that saying this is the same as saying that uh, 3 times absolute value of x minus 1 is less than epsilon. Okay, cool. And then now uh, we already said that absolute value of 2x minus 3 is less than 3. So if this is true, then surely uh, replacing 3 with something that's less than it namely absolute value of 2x minus 3, should still have the inequality as it is. Um, so um, x minus 1 is less than epsilon. In other words, when this is true, this has to be true. Okay, cool. And then next we go 
we have absolute value of 2x minus 3 times x minus 1 is less than epsilon, which means we have absolute value of um, 2x squared, and then it's going to be minus 5x uh, plus 3 is less than epsilon, which means that we have absolute value of 2x squared minus 5x and then minus 3 minus a negative 6x, or uh, negative 6, sorry, is less than epsilon. I'm just so used to saying x. All right, cool. Um, that completes our check and that completes our delta epsilon proof and hope you enjoyed this. Keep watching for harder examples. Take care.